It's Friday night, Atlanta. Time to rise up tonight with Kelly Price and Harry Douglas. Presented by AT&T. Atlanta, what's going on? We're back with a second season of Rise Up Tonight. I'm Kelly Price, joined in person by former Falcons wide receiver Harry Douglas, who is looking fresh in the flesh. HD, I'm so excited we can get rid of those Zoom boxes this year. Not only you, Kelly, I'm excited to be in studio with you, the great Kelly Price. I appreciate that. Let's get down to business, something the Falcons didn't really do last week in preseason game number one, Harry. You know head coach Arthur Smith very well. He's a take no ish kind of guy. How important is it that the Falcons practice and then play with a sense of urgency this week in Miami? And Kelly, I don't think you could have used a better word than urgency, right? Having a sense of urgency. We seen last week in the first preseason game against the Tennessee Titans, the young guys got a lot of playing time. These guys got a lot of reps. So that means they are now accustomed to the NFL game speed. So what does that mean? You have to have a sense of urgency. You have to wrap things up, especially going into a week preseason number two, I mean, uh, against the Miami Dolphins. That being said, the Falcons linked up with the Dolphins to host joint practices this week, something we really didn't see a lot under the previous regime. Harry, you told me you did these about 10 or 11 times in your playing career. How valuable are those sessions? First, Kelly, I'll tell you, no one loves joint practices more than me, myself. But some of the things you get to see from joint practices as a head coach from their perspective, you get to see offense, defense, special teams, how that flows against uh, good on good, basically. And then as individuals, you get to see how your guys fare up against other opponents. That's what you want. And then 100%, I'll say lastly, when these guys have to do that and go against these uh, new opponents, they have to give their all out there on the football field. All that leading up to Saturday night at Hard Rock Stadium. TBD if we'll see much of the Falcons we're used to seeing on Sundays. But of course, it's all weird this season with three preseason games instead of the four we've been used to. What's your take on one less preseason game, Harry? And does that hurt or help a squad like Atlanta? I'll tell you, Kelly, it's weird. It's weird. For so many years, you had four preseason games. And I'll tell you, it's really going to hurt those young players and those guys who are, trying to fight, who are trying to fight for a roster spot because usually that four preseason game is the game that they actually get to do that in. Now you don't have it. You, you only have three. And we see across the NFL, we don't even know when, when the, the, the dress makeup game is going to be for these guys and the starters to go full time. So I think it's going to hurt the young guys and guys actually fighting for a roster spot. Well, no matter what the final record was last season or last game, we know the Falcons brought the heat week in and week out in the fashion department. Let's check out some of the best Falcons fits. We've got Frank Darby up first, the king of immaculate vibes with the Louis duffel bag, some ice up top and a casual dress shirt. Harry. I love Frank. I love his energy. But now that I know that he dresses like Rico Suave, <laughs> Frank, you're my boy, Blue. <laughs> Honestly, the fits last week were in preseason form, I've got to say. So we're going to take a look at some of the best off-season looks. Let's go first to the incredible draft day look for Kyle Pitts. This man's got the best initials, I must say, and he's rocking my all-time favorite color in forest green. And I love this look, Harry. Money, Kelly. This <laughs> suit screams money. Uh, now, K now, KP, I know you're drafted <laughs> in the top 10, top 5 to be exact. My goodness. Money, 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 money. He's <laughs> got the green to show it. Finally, got to give a shout out to Grady Jarrett for this fit. He rocked for his mom's retirement party. Some nice summer vibes. Remember, no white jeans after Labor Day, Grady. Go off Alicia Jarrett with her fit on point two. Grady, don't you listen to Kelly. When you have the money that you have, you can wear white jeans <laughs> whatever you want to. Grady always fresh, and I love that he's a mama's boy, always supporting his mom. I love that about Grady. Yeah, he makes more money than me, so I guess he can make the rules, right? We're so excited to be back in studio together this season on Rise Up Tonight, getting back together in person, really all giving us just like back to school vibes. And it really is that time of year after all. With that in mind, we asked some of the Falcons what their favorite subject in school was in this week's question of the week. Math, numbers, anything number related. It was easy for me to pick up on patterns. So it just, it, everything just made sense. Math. I liked math. Uh, not to like a plot. Math gets really hard now. Like there's normal math, algebra, whatever. Advanced algebra, straight. Then it keeps going, and I don't want to do that. I don't even care what they're talking about. It's, it's a different language. So I got out at the right time. Uh, probably social studies. I, 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 don't, I felt like I didn't really have to study for that one. I just enjoyed it. It kind of came naturally and just you know enjoyed going to that class. First subject in school was history. Um, I'm pretty good with dates and numbers and stuff like that. So I always had that that mind is like, I can remember it. Like if she's tell me, like you'd be like, okay, this is gonna be on your test. Oh, I got it. 
I mean, I think I passed my histories in Auburn with 98 and a 96. Both of them. They tried to make me do a lot of major in it, but I wasn't, I wasn't going for that. That's too much. <laughs> So my favorite subject was probably English back in school. I'm a huge grammar stickler. What about you? Well, first, Kelly, it's funny that you have two of the smartest guys on the team in Zacchaeus and Foyer Luke and those guys, Virginia and Ivy League schools. They choose math. Not so much for me. I'm a history guy. Every time I travel out of the country, I try to go see what that country history is, and I take my time doing it as well. You and Marlon and Josh, I mean, a lot of football guys like in history out here. Um, speaking of, you know, football on the field, who do you hope to see this week in preseason game number two? I'm going to have to go with my guy, wide receiver Tajay Sharp, a guy I played with in Tennessee, a guy that I know that can make plays, a guy that has been with Arthur Smith before this Atlanta stunt. So I'm looking forward to seeing Tajay make some plays down there in Miami. Anything else on the defensive side of the ball you hope to see? I want to see those guys continue what they did last week. Dean Pease, he brought the fight to the offense, didn't wait for the offense to bring the fight to him. So looking forward to those guys running around, hitting, blitzing, and making plays like they did in game one. Do you think they're going to put a lot of the starters out this week, or do you think it's going to be not so much that dress rehearsal we're used to That's saying? the thing we we don't even know, Kelly. That's the thing about this three preseason game schedule is that we don't know. But I think if I know Arthur Smith like I know him, I think some of the guys I actually play out there this week. And knowing Arthur Smith, what do you hope he what do you think he hopes to get out of this week? Well, offensively a rhythm, right? Uh, get rid of some of the penalties, give the offense a chance to actually thrive. You've seen that last week. They didn't actually do too much, but I think he's looking forward to that. The old, old offensive line, more continuity, more cohesiveness, and, and, and winning the point of attack. And that is a great tease for later on your, your film room. We're going to talk about uh, those penalties and giving themselves a chance, so stay tuned for that later on. Still to come on Rise Up tonight, we go in the nest with a rap legend, Pastor Troy. Plus, how one homegrown falcon is given back to the community that raised him. That and much more coming your way next on Rise Up Tonight. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing. And by Truist, committed to a better future. What's up, ATL? This is Ted Crack. Let's rejoin my favorite co-hosts, Kelly and Harry, for more Rise Up tonight on your home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. A lot of the Falcons players I've had a chance to talk to have said that one of the best parts of being vaccinated now has been being able to get back into the community safely. Every week we like to showcase how the team gives back, and Mike Davis has been doing just that since the moment he became a Falcon this offseason. As we rise up for Atlanta, brought to you by Truist. As we get back into football, kids across Georgia are getting back into the classroom. Davis, who's a Stevenson High School alum, is just as excited to be an Atlanta Falcon now as he is to give back to the community that raised him. He recently helped provide brand new backpacks and school supplies for kids from a couple of local YMCA's to make sure they have a strong start to their school year. It, it makes me smile. It makes me happy. Uh, it makes my day. Uh, anytime I can see a kid smile, I feel like, you know, my job was done. Anything to, you know, boost them to want to do better. Um, and I feel like it's the little things. You never know. Me just being in their presence can, can make them want to be, you know, the best student they want to be, uh, the best brother or sister they want to be, best athlete they want to be. And speaking of getting back to school, we're getting back to high five in your face football tonight too. Our first high five spotlight of 2021 is a big one. Booker T. Washington High School coach Derek Avery, who was the Atlanta Falcons High School Coach of the Year, was named the recipient of the 2020 NFL Don Shula High School Coach of the Year this week. Last fall, Avery led the Bulldogs to a 7-3 record and a return to the postseason, a four-win improvement from 2019. And off the field, he was the first local high school coach to partner with the Falcons player-led social Justice Committee in the Rise Up and Vote campaign, which focused on voter education and participation. Even though some of his players couldn't even vote, they learned about the process and those who were eligible volunteered at the polls. The grand prize, $30,000 for the Bulldogs football program from Nike, and Avery will also be invited to attend Super Bowl 56 in Los Angeles. To be honest, I was just happy just to be mentioned in the word Don Shula. Um, uh, to be honest, by the Atlanta Falcons. So just being nominated by the Atlanta Falcons, I, I, I felt like I had already won. And just to get this, this news uh, on today, uh, it was just an a, a, a unreal moment uh, for this award to happen to somebody like myself, to be honest. 
Super cool moment for him and to be be sure to tune in next Friday night for the best high school football coverage around high five sports game of the week will be a good one next week. Rock Mart versus Cedar Town still to come on rise up tonight. Our Falcons insider Dave Archer sees one position group as most pivotal to winning week two of the preseason. Find out which one later on. And coming up next, we go into the nest with my guy, Pastor Troy. Stick around. You're going to want to see this one. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight, and it's time to hop into the nest with Kelly, Harry, and tonight's influencer, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight. We are joined now by Pastor Troy, producer, rapper, um, yeah. obviously a big Falcon fan. How excited yeah. are you for this season? And uh, who are some of your favorite uh, guys on the roster right now you're going to be watching this year? Man, I'm very excited, man. Just to get back in there with the fans and everything, man. I, I'm talking about, man, I didn't know I missed, was going to miss it so much, but definitely looking forward to this season, man. The addition of uh, Davis, you know, uh, of course, my guy, Ridley. Manny Ice, man, it's just going to be a good season. I'm looking forward to the boy putting it together and going in. Coach no, Smith, too, man. I like the coach, man. I really like the coach. Hey, I'm glad you said that, man. Coach Smith is a solid dude. Now, I got to, for you, I got some questions for you now, man. You know, you're my guy. You, you my boy now. Let's go. Yeah, I, I need you to tell the people, man, when did you fall in love with the Falcons and who is your favorite Falcon all time? Man, you know what? It has to go with Deion Sanders, man. Me and Prime always laugh because uh, I was in probably about the fourth grade, man, and my uh, – Current event was that the Atlanta Falcons drafted Deion Sanders out of Florida State and everything, man. I had the picture of him coming through the airport with his chains on. That was it for me, man. Come on, bro. Then it was right there doing like the rap phase. So it just made it so cool, man, for him to come to Atlanta. It changed the game and the culture. Tell everybody how you came up with the uh, Pastor Troy name. The Pastor Troy thing, man, uh, I definitely didn't come up with it. Uh, my dad is a pastor, man. My dad is a pastor. And that was our big thing growing up. I love the rap music, but a lot of it wasn't appropriate for my age. So the whole Pastor Troy thing was something that I came up with while I was in college. Another dude came up to me and man was like, uh, I was rapping and the dude said, Pastor Troy. I was like, man, why you call me that? He was like, man, it sounds like you're a preacher when you rap. I said, man, that's a tight name. I got to ask my dad, can I use it? Now, music is big in my life, right? And yeah. when I think about music, I think about songs that, that meant a lot to me, songs that had meaning, songs yeah. that could change people's lives. Yeah. So vice versa. Yeah. Vice versa. Man, yeah. what message was you trying to get through to the people when you dropped Man, with that vice versa. versa joint, man, I wanted people to just really open up their mind and go a little bit deeper than just settling for what anybody just tells you. You know what I mean? Because it gets a lot deeper than that, man. Everybody don't always tell the truth. You know what I mean, man? So that vice versa, man, it was more so of a reality for me, man. I was in college, and just a lot of the things that I was seeing wasn't necessarily what people were doing. What's, yeah. <laughs> What's something in your career that you're most proud of as a performer? Uh, being a part of what we're doing with the Atlanta Falcons this uh, this year, man, with the Dirty Birds Nest, man, it's always been a dream of mine to get into marketing for – uh, a major team, especially a team here in Atlanta, man. I've always had affiliation with the Georgia Bulldogs and just the other team in the city, but to be embraced how they're embracing us this season, I'm really excited about it. Section 134, baby, it's going down every home game. Y'all better watch out for it. That's right. That's the Dirty Bird's Nest, baby. The Dirty Bird's <laughs> Nest, baby. <laughs> Let everybody know, what does a down south Georgia boy mean in, in, in the eyes of Pastor Troy? Man, a down south Georgia boy, to me, man, is just a brother that understands where we from down here, man. You know what I mean? It just ain't a brother from Atlanta. We got a whole beautiful state down here, man. Brothers that represent just that southern hospitality, how we do it down here, man. You know what I mean? Just representing, letting them know we Georgia boys and we ready for whatever, man. You know what I mean? People had to put some respect on Georgia. Now, Pastor Troy, we know that you are referenced in two Kanye West songs. Obviously, he's kind of taken up residency in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. <laughs> How well do you know him? Do you know if he's still there? And when is he releasing Donda? <laughs> man, you know what? I met Kanye probably about on two or three occasions, man. I was able to uh, thank him for throwing me up in the album, man. Those were big records he included me in. But I haven't got a chance to catch up with him at the stadium yet, man. But I appreciate him coming down here 
to Atlanta and making his presence known because everybody knows across the world, man, all attendance is on the bins right now. And when Kanye, what he got going on? Don't know if we're going to have a release date anytime soon, but it's been cool, all the, all the hype around the stadium. Hey, we're all waiting. I don't know if he's still there, but we're all we're all still just waiting for that album to drop. Um, he is. <laughs> speaking <laughs> of uh, things dropping, what do you have coming up next? Man, dog, so I have a new album on PastorTroy.com. It's called PT Cruiser. Everybody can go out there and check it out. we really just been gearing everything up for the season, man, ready to get back out here and just hug on some Falcon fans, man, dap them up. Everybody be safe, wear your mask, and do all that stuff they have in place for protocol. But we're going to have some fun, man, starting September 11th. Really good stuff. Thank you so much for joining us in the nest. Obviously, we're all really right. excited to see what the Falcons do out there and uh, excited yeah. to see more from you this season as well. Um, you guys can catch this full conversation on fox5atlanta.com, and we'll be right back. We got you covered with more Falcons news and nuggets, including a trip over to Harry's film room. Rise up tonight. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight. I'm Harry Douglas, and we're going to dive right into my film room. Now, the first play we have for the Atlanta Falcons in their first preseason game on offense is a third and nine situation. This is the very first drive of the game. Now, the defense in white, the Tennessee Titans, they're playing a coverage we call one robber. What that means is that this corner has this receiver man, this guy has a running back man, this linebacker has this tight end man, this DB has him man, this corner has this receiver man, and this safety right here is going to be robbing anything coming to the middle of the field with this safety going to the middle to have those uh, responsibilities as man free. Now, as we let this, this, this play play, we're going to see the tight end is going to go in motion right here, right? We call that an indicator. This is going to let us know what the defense is playing. As you see him go in motion, you're going to see this linebacker run with him. Right now, this quarterback, AJ McCarron, knows it's man coverage. Now, at the top of the screen, you have wide receiver Tajay Sharp going to run a deep out, good route, good catch, first down. Only thing is that we have a flag, right? Why do we have a flag? We're going to go to the beginning of the play. Right tackle, Mayfield, is not lined up on the line of scrimmage. He's in the backfield. That's what I mean by you have to give yourself a chance to make a play to thrive for this offense to push the ball and move the ball, especially on third downs. They must do that against Miami so they can even have a chance. That's a great point, Harry. Thank you. I think we all want to see more than 138 total yards of offense tomorrow night. And to Harry's point of giving themselves a chance, the Falcons need much better O-line play to do so. Falcons insider Dave Archer has more on keys to preseason game number two. Falcons travel to South Florida, take on the Miami Dolphins in week two of the preseason. Hey, everybody, I'm Dave Archer. What are we looking for for the preseason? You want steady improvement. Well, one of the areas they're going to have to improve dramatically on from the first game to this one is offensive line play. Really struggled up front. Now, I know none of the regulars played except for maybe that left guard position. So you get Caleb McGarry back, Matt Hennessy back, Chris Lindstrom back, and certainly Jake Matthews at left tackle will be back. Will they play? We'll have to wait and see. And that's what I'm looking for, number one, is how many of the regulars will play during the preseason. Coaches around the league found out that, hey, I can put a pretty good product on the field and not play in the preseason. That's what happened last season. How much will that carry over to this year? We'll have to wait and see. And I'm sure that's something that Coach Smith is mulling over right now as we begin to think about who's going to be on the field. And then think about that continuity along the offensive line. Caleb McGarry now back at the right tackle position. That means Jalen Mayfield, the third-round draft pick from Michigan, can slide over to left guard where he competed in the spring with Josh Andrews, throw Sam Jones in that mix. Now all of a sudden you start liking the way that matches up. Let's look for some continuity along that offensive line in week two of the preseason. Thanks, Dave, for that insight. And thank you for staying up late with us on Rise Up Tonight. For Harry Douglas, I'm Kelly Price. Happy football season, y'all. We'll see you right back here next Friday night.